And I was perplexed by this question that Michael Vo gave me. And he said, what is truth? What is power in theater? And what is comedy? Because he knew that was the only way I would pay attention in his class. And so I studied this for a full year. And let's start out with the King's Fools, pros before hoes. So let's, <laughs> a fool thinks himself to be wise, but a wise man knows himself to be a fool. Back then, we have kings, we've got princes, we've got princesses, all that thing. But the court jesters were in charge of telling the truth. If the queen died, if something bad happened, war started, you know, your lady's mad because she cheated on you, something like that. The court jester is in charge of telling the king. Why is that? I believe it's because he has the ability to tell the truth above anyone else. Also, fun fact, the kings that had court jesters were actually honored more because they always believed a leader that can laugh at himself is honored more. So if you can't laugh at yourself back then, you really want to be allowed right now. So now I'm going to tell you something. Comedy and drama, I learned at Second City, are the exact same thing. What? No. It's true. Think of, <laughs> so one of my favorite teachers, Jen Ellison at Second City, said comedy and drama are only context. Think of Lord of the Rings and think of Superbad. One is about a fat boy and a skinny boy trying to get a ring into a hole. One is about a fat boy and a skinny boy trying to get a different thing into a different hole. <laughs> Same story, different, just different areas. One's in Mordor, one's in high school. Both awful places. <laughs> Come on, baby. Baby. Oh, hell. Oh, no. Maybe. Okay, I'm obviously not in economics. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to dig into the theory. So one, there are three aspects of comedy that I have discovered and that Second City has taught me and Libera, who is a genius. The first off is pain. Anything in comedy is painful. Uh, silent films, if you look at them, they're dying. A pie to the face is not nice. Then you've got Lucille Ball, wham, but why? You've got the honeymooners, he beats his wife and we laugh at that. <laughs> that went on for years. Everything, knock knock jokes, all of these, that's even why anti-comedy jokes exist. Why did the boy fall off the sled? Because of the Holocaust. Doesn't make sense, but we still laugh. Maybe, maybe I'll go. Okay, next thing, truth. This word is the reason theater majors are stressed out every day. If you want to tell the truth, make people laugh, otherwise they'll kill you. I believe this to be very true. Um, that is why comedy exists today, because comedy is all about getting into the truth of the moment. Why is it that if there's a present moment thing, that's why improv is so powerful, is because the audience is in on the joke. That's why you laughed at my Westminster Confessions joke, because we all know about it, because it's truthful. And because some of you actually do believe theater majors will become strippers, that is why you laughed. And you know what? No problem. <laughs> I don't care. Um, and that is why we look at things. Look, remember Tina Fey, Sarah Palin? Yes, come on, class. Okay. We all loved it because the literal lines of those sketches were exactly what she said in interviews. How truthful can you get if it's just the person, if it's an impersonator being the person? That's why actors are so prevalent today because the truthfulness of that character is why we love it. That's why we come you know, connected. That's why we care about someone in less than 90 minutes. That's why we cry at Titanic, people. <laughs> now the third part is distance. Who are these guys? Thank you. South Park, I want you to do something, and this will most likely make you laugh. Think of South Park, but imagine it with real children. <laughs> you would be watching Kenny get slaughtered each week. You would be watching Cartman call Kyle a Jew. Why is it that we let cartoons do this and not real people? Family Guy, Archer, the most sexist show we love because it's a cartoon, because of that distance. For example, Greek theater back then, instead of going through like different um, uh, places and like 
making the story in past or present, or future, I mean, um, they would travel around, like kind of like what Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live is for us, but they would make fun of you. That would be like me and my theater friends right there coming up and making fun of each and every one of you after interviewing you. But we would add distance to that, physical distance. What Greek theater did was they added giant phallic attire. So giant boobs and giant dongs. So, and that's how they performed, is to make it so that we could see that and we could relate to it with the truthfulness and the painfulness, but that distance made it so that we could, you know, swallow it. Um, another example of this, besides South Park, is um, physical comedy. If I actually fell and broke my ankle right now, no one would be happy, especially my parents. If I fell and got back up and slid on the banana, everyone would love it. They would probably even clap. <laughs> now here comes my theory of theater, comedy, whatever. I'm sorry, th uh, this is like the worst PowerPoint scale I have, but I'm not that creative. So here's a reality, and we'll get to that. Over here is tragedy. We get all the way over. This is an example of Oedipus with the chorus masks. Um, it's as sad as you can get. If you realize you had sex with your mother, and you gouged out your eyes, and the chorus has to tell us, and then the town is in dismay, it's really sad. <laughs> and then you go all the way over here to, to farce, you know, what we think of, 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 of uh, physical comedy. Noises Off is a great example because a lot of people have seen it. It's one of America's favorites. But that's all farce. We can relate to that in some aspects. But when do we get to the most profound art, the most truthful art, as I gleek on the stage? It's because we get into this scale of reality. I believe that the second tragedy and comedy relate, it becomes reality. I believe that is why when we go to funerals, we are naturally lying. Because we are in this tragedy line of life that we are desperately seeking to go here. I believe that is why dark humor exists. Because if we're all the way, if we have a tragic life and we say, my life's fine, my dad died this weekend, but <laughs> besides that, you know, gas is a good place. You know, <laughs> exactly. Because we are so far in depression that we use humor to escape it. That is also why funny people have the most scar tissue. Because if you study them, they have the worst past. My first example is Robin Williams. What a brilliant man, what a brilliant comedian, and yet how to end his life. Because even though you might be a comedian, you're still dealing with all this. But how does this relate to theater and art, Allison? I don't get it. Well, because reality right here, the most brilliant of actors, the most brilliant of performers understand this balance. Audiences understand that tragedy also comes with comedy, and comedy comes with tragedy. When we are in that middle, when we are in that equilibrium of the truthful moment, when we include the pain and distance, that's when the most profound art is found. I believe that is when the most profound performances are found for human beings. I believe that's when we relate the most, because it always has to be connected into reality, and that's why we can have sketch, and that's why we can still even produce Greek theater today, because we relate to that, but we still need comedy especially since with mod modern audiences. So what are my final thoughts for all of you? That's me in Ireland being a badass. Okay, um, <laughs> so what I want you all to realize is that comedy is simply telling the truth, and that is the biggest joke of all. That is why we have art today. That is why theater is so important today. That is why we have all of these different things. And that's why I believe why comedians and truth tellers go hand in hand. If we are always truthful in the moment, I believe each and every one of you can be a comedian. I believe each and one, every one of you can be a profound artist. And I believe that is why I was here. So thank you. <laughs>